Howdy folks, thanks for stopping in at Dad's Toolbox. In today's video, we're going to make a jig for our trim router. Stick around. Alright guys, so here's the project I'm working on today. I've got this cross I'm making. We're going to do a half lap joint here in the middle. And I need to cut this out and make it consistently the same depth all the way through here. And the same thing on this side. Uh, so that when these two pieces fit together, they're flush. Uh, now, I have a, a jig I made for this router a while back for a different purpose. This was for cutting around the, uh, the edge of uh, like a tabletop. And I put it, I made it longer so that I have more control over it. But what I want to do, I'm probably going to use a piece of this MDF here. I need something that will bridge the gap. Uh, so like when I cut this out and I start working my way across, it that the, the router doesn't pivot and, and change the depth. I want it to remain consistent. So I'm going to make something that will cover that entire gap and carry the weight of the router. Um, I'll put little guards in here to, to make sure that I don't I don't go beyond my lines here. Actually, I'm going to cut these with a saw first so I don't get tear out on the edges. Uh, but we're talking about the router jig. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm, I'm going to use a piece of this MDF here. Probably only going to go just wide enough to put the, the router on there. I'm going to put some little handles on it and that way we can control it. And it will slide back and forth across medium like so so first thing I need to do is I need to square square this piece up because it's not square so out to the table saw So we have our piece here, as you can see, this is why I'd... I designed it like this so that it would carry the weight of this router even if it was all the way over here. So this is the idea here. Alright, so the first thing we got to do is get our router base. Let's get this set up differently so i got a little bit more room to work. Yeah, right in there. So, put that on. Take our router base off. There we go. Go ahead. We'll pull these screws off. Now, you want to be real gentle with these screws, and not strip them out. So, the first thing we want to do is find the center of that board. Easiest way to do that, let's see if this thing's long enough. It is. We'll just line this up corner to corner. And just shoot across. Okay, so this is where we want the center of our router base. I think I want it facing this way. Now, for the most part, I'm just going to kind of line this up by eye because it's not critical that it's in exactly the center for what we're doing. 
trying to save a little bit of time. Let's see if I can get in there and make a little mark. What I'm doing is I'm punching the lead out really far on this mechanical pencil. I'm just going to make a little mark. Lever out of the way. I'm gonna mark all four of these. Oh, just broke it. I need to switch hands. Okay, so you can see our four marks. That's pretty good. My uh, center punch here, we're gonna punch some divots right on those spots. And all that is is a little spring loaded center punch. Okay, now we can drill those should we desire. Um, we can pick up one of these little uh, calipers. At, I think I got this one at Home Depot. Um, just to get an idea of what size drill bit you're going to need, you can see I'm reading that. That's uh, about a 32nd of an inch over an eighth. So, I'll get out our drill index here. See right here, where's my eighth? Right here, eight. There's a sixty-fourth. There's five thirty seconds. I'm actually gonna go ahead and push it up to three sixteenths. Uh, that way we've got just a little bit of room to wiggle if we need it. I'm gonna go ahead and do this with a hand drill because it's not that thick. I don't have to worry about exactly how straight it is. Let me get a piece of scrap here. Okay, so fit. Let's get this out of the way. Get a hand screwdriver. We get one hole started. All we're doing right now is testing to make sure that our screws will go in the holes. And we don't have to adjust the hole before we countersink it. Okay, so proof of concept, we are correctly spaced. So we're going to go ahead and pull these off now. thing is, we have to sink these screws in so that they'll be inside, so they'll, they don't hang out or something. So, let's, let's do a little caliper again. In order to get that whole screw head in there, we're going to be like a 64th over a quarter. So we'll go five sixteenths for you.
I should do this on the drill press. Over here where you can see at least. Oh, too much. Run it backwards. Yeah, I'm gonna move this over the drill press because the last thing you want to do is drill. So, I got lucky, I didn't go too deep. We're gonna go over the drill press and we'll do these right. Okay, so I've got my drill press over in this little corner over here. It's a little tight, but we'll make it work for what we're doing. Check up our bit. grip on it here so that it self-centers. Good. Now I'm just going to do the other three. All right. So this guy is done for that. Well, here in a minute, we're going to go back over the drill press to drill this hole, but I wanted to show you over here in the light what I'm talking about. Um, we're going to get this all lined up. What we need to do is we need to cut out this center area for the uh, not only for the bit to go through but also so that we can see what it is we're doing. And if you stick this in there it looks like we could get away with see what we want is we want enough meat that we can attach to the base without breaking the, the MDF because it's not really that strong a wood. Uh, but we want as big an area as we can get away with so we can see in there pretty good. Now what I'm looking at is I'm looking at maybe two and a quarter. Let's see if I can cut a two and a quarter inch hole. Okay, well my biggest hole saw is inch and three quarter. Hmm. What I can do is Here's my little ghetto pencil compass. We will, if we want a two and a quarter inch hole, then our diameter needs to be an inch and an eighth. So, here's what we'll do. I'm gonna get these equidistant here. So we can get an accurate measurement. Okay, right around inch and an eighth, right there. Yeah, we'll call that good. So, just stick our nail right there in the center and just move our pencil around in a circle. It's wobbly. Could be in there. Uh, 
not move on it. So there's a circle that we can use. We're actually going to cut that out with our scroll saw. Um, and we still got some work to do over there though. So let's we'll head over there and take this piece of pine for another little treat. things first. What this is, is a hole saw that I've taken the pilot bit out of, so it, it'll just cut a hole uh, or a slug. Uh, we're doing this for we're using this right now because it's convenient for what we're about to do and we're going to follow up with its intended use here in a second. Alright, so we're not really too worried about center because we're going to finish that off with a different tool. We just need a hole there. So we're going to cut it. in there with our screwdriver and push that out. There we go. Do it again. Find a good location, probably right next to that one. Two little holes through our wood here. And push that out. Alright, we're done over here. So you take this sucker, you unscrew it, you hold it right there so it doesn't warp your blade. And then we're just going to flex it and pull that blade off. Okay, so you can see what I've done here. I use the uh, clamp to hold it in a compressed state. And then we're going to put this sucker up through.
And now that I've got it started, I can take the clamp off. I'm going to make sure to hold that sucker. And now, I'm just going to saw in a circle. Let's start over here. Clean this up a little bit. Now you notice I'm, I'm filing at, a, at, a, at an angle, and that's to help bevel this edge. We don't want it. We don't want it snagging up on anything. Okay. It's not a perfect circle, but it'll do. This MDF is nasty stuff, so I'm going to set up my dust collection for this portion. It's going to be kind of loud. center so mark it two and three quarter and two and three quarter get a straight edge close enough and then um We'll go three quarters of an inch in from the end. That's so where we'll do this. Punch. Use one of these guys. Um, we want some that are a little bit longer. Pre-drill 
so that our little pieces of pine don't split. I think I'm going to go a bit smaller. that up in our drill. Actually, let's do this real quick. Make these nicer. Like I said, those things aren't hypercritical. They're just so that we have something to grip our uh, jig with. thing. Let me find it. Here it is. Maybe I'll make a video on it. This is a center finder. Um, you take your item, see how we're pushing it against this, and into that 90 degree corner there. And you can mark the line. We'll rotate it roughly 90 degrees, but it, you know, it's doesn't have to be perfect. There you go. There's center. Do that again on this guy. You can see, I mean, that'll work. You know, what's that, about two and a half? Two and a quarter in diameter? Two and a half? Yeah. If you're using stock that big, you need something better than that anyway, but pretty handy, right? So there's those. Let's uh, punch them. We're going to do everything right. Get my little tiny drill bed here. I would normally hold something like that, but we can actually do it a lot safer with something we've got sitting right here. No reason not to. And all this is is a place for that screw to go in without expanding and, and cracking the, the little handle we made. You can actually make those with plywood too. You take the plywood, pull, drill out your slugs, and then stack them. Uh, thingy, where's that? Yeah, see, this one's made with plywood. Alright, now back to this guy. We'll find that later. Thirty seconds looks like. I think that'll get it done. Piece of scrap wood here. like before we're going to countersink it a little bit this isn't so critical on the depth because we're going to glue it on the top as well Spoo 
put some glue in there. See, and that's what we want is we want that screw to be recessed. Find our pilot hole there. My screwdriver go. Tightened up. Do the exact same thing over here. Feed our screw through the hole. Find our pilot hole. Right there. Get started. Close enough. Got our glue squeeze out. Wipe that off. Wipe that off. Oh, that circle looks ugly. It's all right though, it's not critical. So now we take this guy, put him on. Remember to start all your screws first before you tighten any of them. go. You could do it so you could hold it like this. I don't like having my fingers anywhere near there, so this is perfect. And it's smaller and lighter than trying to get, you know, a big, big full-size router out here. Um, one thing we're going to need to do real quick, actually, is this right here. Our holes are a little rough around the edges, so we'll clean those up. MDF for a couple reasons. First off, it's already stable, meaning it shouldn't warp or uh, change because it's 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 stable already. It's mostly just glue and sawdust. In fact, that's exactly what it is. Uh, secondly, it's already nice and smooth. We don't have to do a lot of work to achieve a smooth, flat finish in order to make sure that we're accurate in our in our uh, cutting. Uh, if this were to swell or warp or in any way, then we wouldn't be able to use it because the idea is this is going to hold our trim router perfectly perpendicular to our work surface um, so we can maintain 
a certain depth as we're going back and forth across our medium. All right, guys, that's going to do it for our router jig. I'll go ahead and leave you with the footage of me putting this thing together so you can see how it turned out. Uh, in the meantime, if you found this video entertaining or helpful in any way, mash that like button. Let me know I'm doing all right. And if you'd like to see more woodworking videos, because I'm going to start putting those out, mash that subscribe button. Y'all take care.